Okay, let's get going here. So how's everybody? Everybody okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do today is we're going to talk about chemical dependency and we're gonna find out uh, also, uh, you know, you need to know uh, things to protect yourself so you don't relapse, right? And you also have to know just about as much or, or more than your doctor knows. And the reason is because a lot of doctors don't know a lot about chemical dependency. So this is a class. There's a class on chemical dependency, there's a class on for you to understand the concepts of what happens to you. So when you do go to the doctor's office, you can also have a baseline knowledge because ultimately you're responsible for your own addiction. You're responsible for what happens because the doctor's seeing you only for a short amount of time in your life, you know, in that day or that week, and then to make an assessment. So, but you spend, you know, more time than that every day dealing with issues, dealing with stressors, dealing with your family, dealing with your job, and then also you're always assessing your own mood and so forth. So now what we're going to do is we look through the room here, we can see that there's people who are alcoholics here, there's people that do cocaine, there's people that do Oxycontin or drugs, and then we've always wondered, why is that? Why do people do that? And why do people, you know, vary? How comes one person likes alcohol, the next person likes Oxycontin, or that person is bipolar? where that person is depressed, you know, or ADHD and so forth. And we have learned a lot since the last 20 years about that. In 1990, uh, uh, President Clinton came and said, this is the decade of the brain. They knew finally that the brain was a computer. If we look at the brain itself, we have a brain here like this, and a person, you know, it's naturally inside their head. We have a pinium here like this. So we've looked at this pentium right here where all information seems to go through. We'll call it the pentium. It's mid forebrain bundle. They call it the limbic system, mesolimbic system. There's all types of names for that area. And they've looked at this area and they found out that this is very much like a computer or the pentium or the intel there. What happens to the human brain, we have a modulator that hooks to it. It's a steering wheel to it. Like this is the locus ruleus dental tegmental area, nucleus accumbens, uh, that are in here that have different neurotransmitters in them. And we inherit the things that are in there, for, such as norepinephrine, dopamine, different types of dopamine, serotonin in there, and that modulate this uh, area of the pentium so that when you see something, you hear something, or you look at something, some people will cry, some people will be happy, some people will laugh, depends upon how, you know, you know what uh, neurochemicals uh, displacement or, or imbalances that you do have or if it's all normal. See what I mean? So we, in, we inherit those areas and drugs and alcohol affecting those areas modulate that pentium so that you're, you, you perceive a certain event or something different. Somebody on cocaine, they're going to perceive a dog running across the street here a little bit different than maybe some, you know, the normal person or alcoholic or the drunk or whatever. You see what I mean? So it modulates that area. That's what makes us a little bit different. So when we, we look at this, we know that there's different neurotransmitter systems in there.